readers, book nerds, and casual observers, welcome to the Read Along brought to you by the Lit Round Table. I'm Joseph. And I'm Anna, and this is our read along of The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. This is book two of the Broken Earth trilogy. Welcome to week four of The Obelisk Gate. Yes, this week we're talking about chapters 10, 11, and 12. Our chapter titles are 10, You've Got a Big Job Ahead of You, 11, Shafa, Lying Down. Finally, got another Shafa chapter. Uh huh. It's very short, but... Very short. Disturbing, as always. Yeah. And 12, Nason Falling Up. Mm-hmm. Man, we learned a lot. We, we got We got the exposition dump we were expecting. Yeah, so let's start with the uh, Essen and Alabaster bit. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the biggest things we learned this chapter were... There's a big old dead Civ calm on the other side of the planet, and that's where all the Stone Eaters live. Right. And they uh, were human. And we can, got confirmation that they used to be human. And they've been around and a very, very long time. Some of them were around pre-shattering. Including uh, Alabaster's buddy, Amity. And Antimony. he theorizes... We always say her yeah. name wrong. It's Antimony. <laughs> <laughs> and he theorizes that Hoa also may be one of those that was around right. for five ever. Um, also, the moon got like slingshotted out of orbit. It didn't get destroyed, but that means that like it is going to circle back and it is like on its way back. <laughs> yes. So I was um, texting with my boyfriend right before we started recording and he was asking about the book. He's a science teacher. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, we learned that the moon wasn't destroyed. It was pulled into a different orbit. Um, and he was like, that's really cool. Is the orbit closer or faster? And I at first described it as a low ellipses because I was not reading like from the physical, whatever. Yeah. And he said that the ellipses would make it move significantly faster when it's closer and slower when it's farther away. Mm -hmm. And that would really change the visual patterns for people who may have depended on it for timekeeping, which fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it's been missing. Um, like people didn't even know it existed. Mm -hmm. And then I found the actual quote and sent that to him. Um, so for the first time, I'm going to read this from the book. Just, yeah. Okay. So, for the first time, you hear a note of emotion in her voice, annoyance, to impose equilibrium on the Earth-Moon system. What? <laughs> I love how... I love <laughs> Essen's um, comment, like, inner dialogue, because it, it so echoes the reason. It's ours. Perfect. Um, Alabaster said the moon was flung away. And then Antimony said, into a degrading long ellipses orbit. When you stare blankly, she speaks your language again. It's coming back. <laughs> and then, oh, earth, oh, rest, oh, no. You want me to cut, catch the effing moon. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent this to um, Blake. And first he said, that this will happen to our moon eventually. And I was like, what? Well, uh -huh. <laughs> um, And then he was like, oh, it's like a comet then. Um. Right, yeah, like it, it goes far away, then it circles back, gets yeah. really close and gets in the gravity, like the force from it getting so close, it like slingshots out. Yeah. Yeah. And I said that the protagonist is being prompted to catch the moon, and he said, as it's coming back, man, the forces that would be, that would be involved, it'd be pretty fantastic. And then, maybe this is cheating. <laughs> having Blake there. Yeah, because yeah, then he said tidal forces should rip the crust off each plan of each planet apart depending on how close it got. Too close and it would collide. And then he said it all really depends on the comparative masses of each planet, the distance and velocities. But if it were similar to ours, we probably wouldn't survive. Probably liquidized crusts. Yeah, I mean, it would be a world-ending event for sure. For Yeah. For all life on the planet. Right. So I don't know if um, Alabaster telling Essen that she needs to catch the moon is, like, super great. Yeah. 
I guess we'll find out. So that's going to be interesting. I and yeah. and the reason why he ripped the the rift was so that they could have access to that like geothermal energy to more easily catch the moon was kind of like what I was interpreting. Yeah. Right. That was yeah, also so, my interpretation. I don't know. This chapter, a lot of lore, yeah. but also a lot of science that I yeah. don't fully have a grasp on. It's very um, cool. I did tell Blake that he needs to read it so that he can tell me about the science things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Hugh, I think he would enjoy it. I do too. Uh, I've, I, did a hard, I did a hard sell, and by hard sell, mm-hmm. I don't mean like I went in really strong. I mean that I approached it from the wrong direction. And was telling mm. him about the like family dynamics that are so disturbing. And I think he was like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> but you, you you talk about the science of it all. Right. And then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because the, the magic system is very, like, based on science, you know, like kinetic energy and all this stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's really... Interesting. I when the moon comes back, that is going to be terrifying. Mm-hmm. What's the next book uh, called in the series? Oh, is it on the back of this? It is the Stone Sky. There we go. That's um, going to be the moon. Hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, we also learned about how um, this is a three faction war in this chapter. Oh yeah, we got a, a drop about Father Earth. Like, and because Alabaster like jumped into a big hole, and mm-hmm. uh, well, did he jump in, or this... is this the hole that uh, Antimony pulled him into? No, this is where he thought that he he was like kind of delirious. He thought that if he jumped into the hole, he could like make it to the other side of the planet again and mm. <laughs> and get back to Essen. Oh, uh, right. right. And like as he was in the hole, he like got slowed down somehow. And there are like windows and structures in this hole of like, there are people like there, like not currently, but like at one point people were like living super deep down in this hole and he gets like to the center of the earth question mark and discovers that the earth actually is sentient question mark. Uh, because he says this in essence, like, no, that's just a fairy tale. That's just like what people say. That's not real. And he's like, oh no. I mean, some of it's definitely made up, but like, no, there's, the earth is alive Mm -hmm. and that's terrifying. Right. So that is the third faction in this war, I guess. Right. It's the, uh, father earth, like the origins aren't actually on father Earth's side. It's the opposite where the origins were the ones that screwed everything up and flung the moon away and did the shattering and Father Earth is retaliating against that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that means uh, the. So here's what I'm thinking: the Guardians are like on the side of Father Earth. The Shaf- the Shafa chapter and Nason chapter, led me to believe that as well. So I'm thinking the voice that they hear in their heads is actually like the earth talking to them perhaps which is also terrifying Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah lots of lots of things uncovered in these little chapters yeah um oh there was also the bit where um alabaster was talking about how antimony had pulled him away from that terrible moment on the island and how he was fighting mm. against her and then realized how stupid that was because if he actually got away, he would just be dead because yeah. he can't survive in rock. Yeah. He would become one with the stone. Just right. Whoop. So. <laughs> Atomized. Um, yeah. But he sensed everything that happened, which is wild. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Oh, yeah, and this chapter opened happened. again with Essen admitting that she, Okay. You've called him crazy so many times, told yourself that you despised him even as you grew to love him. Ah, uh, yeah. See? Confirmed. There Confirmed was actual again. affection. Yes. 
Um, I feel like Inon may have been like the glue that kind of held For sure. the the group together, and then after he was gone, it was kind of like. Well, they were also separated you know, for separated for years and you know I think if that they was had very not traumatic. been forcibly separated I think that they could have continued on but yeah they were so yeah um funny how in the moment she did not admit that to us but mm-hmm. you know hindsight right right yes. was she ready to admit it to herself in the moment maybe not I don't think so um I think that 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 was a realization that we experienced together. Mm-hmm. So, yes, since we are we are Essen after all. Correct. <laughs> I yeah, there are. Well, so are we done with the the Essen chapter? I, th- I think I so. Got, yeah, that's. I got a little um, the perspective for the Nason chapter. I felt a little muddy on. Because it's supposed to be Nason's perspective, but there were several times where we got pulled away and we got. It, I it, I don't know. It, it felt got pulled like, back into second person occasionally. Yeah, which I think is the Hoa interjection, right? I believe, like, that's what I've been led to believe, yes. Um, so that got a little muddy for me, which is not a bad thing, because I think that that was a very muddy. There's yeah. a lot happening. But let's let's talk about the Shafa chapter first, then we'll get to Right. So to biggest things biggest things we learned from the little Shafa chapter. Mm-hmm. Um he recognizes he remembers. Right. He finally put it together. Uh he knows that Nason is Damia's kid. Uh and that's definitely gonna go well for everyone. <laughs> Uh, we also I, get some but, like insights into the other guardians and stuff too, but right. I, okay. I am confused a little bit about, so the first little bit of this chapter, there's like a pair, a very small paragraph that's written in first person him again. I wish he hadn't done so much to you. You don't like being him to any degree. You will like less knowing that he is part of Nason, but don't think about that right now. Is that Hoa talking to Essen? I think so. I think this Gosh. is Hoa. This is it's, yeah. It's it's making my mind a little bendy. Yeah, it's very. Uh, and when you're yeah, listening to it, and you can't see the like paragraph, but like star breaks, mm-hmm. it makes it a little that's harder. confusing. But that's okay. Um, so that's wild. Mm-hmm. But I think that that just means that Shafa is going to be a part of Nason's story. Do you agree? Yes, like he is firmly like entrenched in her life at this point. Yes, yes. Um, I think it would take his death for him to be removed from her life because she also views him as a trustworthy person, at least more trustworthy than like her actual father. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shafa Which... is someone who will actually protect her. I hate that I'm going to say this. Yeah, I'm very conflicted. Like, (laughs) after this chapter, like, Shafa for sure did some shady stuff, but he is also Mm -hmm. very um, remorseful Mm -hmm. in this chapter about some of the things that he has done in the past, which makes me feel conflicted. He he is still a person. Yes. Who has who has experienced. Like loss and hurt, and he is in constant pain, which chronic pain does things to you, um, right. like mentally. Right. Um, it has a very, very big impact on your psyche and like your personality. So, like, but he yes, remembers he's unt- breaking Damia's hand. Yeah, and, and he he's regrets like, it. "Why did I do that?" Yeah, that's not how you show someone you love them. And I was like, "Correct, you yeah. are correct." We know that we know from Alabaster that the Guardians are still like they still use magic, but it's a different kind of magic and it's really deadly. Uh, he still hears these voices in his head. So like the Guardians are under the influence of some kind of higher like. Well, and they're not human. They're yeah, they're like they're genetically altered mm-hmm. uh, human. They're human-esque. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. Um, Java has like a run in with a, a human um, where I she is potentially sad. pregnant with his child, but he can't let that happen. Because instead of her being scared, she was curious. Yeah. And he he tried to shoo her away, but she wouldn't. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was such a sad story. Because that also, that happened cr- like chronologically before the Damia stuff did, before yes. he even met her. Yeah. Like if, I feel like if that had happened after he had been kind of like reborn. Um, oh, for sure. It would have been a totally given... different... Because it feels like it feels like right now he's a little more free than he mm-hmm. was. Mm-hmm. He's he has a little more agency now than I think he did previously. Right, I would agree with that. So I feel like maybe things could have ended differently there, but man, that was a sad story. How she got pregnant, she insisted it wasn't his. Didn't matter. Couldn't risk it. Like killed everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um. And then he remembers the barn. He remembers all of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he talks about how much he loved Damia and how she was different from all the other kids. And when he had heard of a, of an origin reaching out to an obelisk, he was like, oh, that's my girl. Mm-hmm. Um, he was like, I knew that she didn't die. I knew she was somewhere. Mm-hmm. She's too good to die. When when he, they rolled up to the the pirate cove, he was like, he had this sense of like fatherly pride, you know, he, he was proud of her. And he really and like hoped f- that she wouldn't do something that would yeah. make him have to kill her. Yeah. Uh, man. The girl who did not die, reborn, his mm-hmm. Damia. Also, this was in like a previous section, but I forgot to, to mention it and it struck me she has like essen now has an aversion to the color burgundy Mm -hmm. because of the i didn't realize why at first but then i realized it was because of the guardians uniforms oh yeah like every time that uh jiju would bring in like wine or something um she like had to she had to leave she had to leave the room uh i i had forgotten that's what it was either wow yeah it's because of the color of the guardian uniforms. That's wild. Uh, it's uh, mm-hmm. kind of off topic for what we're talking about, but I just I just was reminded of it talking about Shafa, and yeah. I forgot to I forgot to mention it last time we recorded. But yeah, um, so Shafa definitely had some strong feelings towards Cyan Essen, mm-hmm. uh, and now he has her kid. And they have, I feel like Nassan and Shafa are shaping up to have an even stronger connection than Absolutely. Cyan, Cyan and Shafa did. Um, Absolutely. Because Cyan deep down still kind of, ever since the hand breaking, you know, didn't really view him the same way. She was scared of him. Uh, but with Nassan, it's more of a genuine like she's latched onto him and it's more of a genuine like parental role that he's adopted. Yeah. He asks her if she's afraid of him and she says never. Yeah. Um, and asks, and asks her if she's safe when in the next chapter, when, uh, when she comes to him and says that she needs his help, his first question is, are you safe? And, that just kind of strikes her because that's not something that, that like her dad would have ever said to her. Like Shafa to her is the only person that actually loves her or cares about her in any significant way. And I mean, I can't even blame her for that. No, because it's true. It's, it but it's, true. it's, be- it's because of the failings of all of the people around her. Like yeah. Shafa is not a good person. He's terrifying. He's a killer. He's not, he's, he's like, not completely human, uh, but he's still better than every other parental figure she's ever had, which yeah. is so sad. And uh, he's asking why. He's asking important questions to try and like deconstruct himself. Mm-hmm. So I'm really annoyed that I feel so conflicted about Shafa. But you know who I'm not feeling conflicted about? 
Jija. Jija. Oh my gosh. Kill him. He's terrible. Um, okay, so chapter 12, the nascent chapter. Re- really quick, really quick oh. before 12, I just wanted to say that it's it was profound to me that Shafa, he keeps saying never again. Um, yeah. He says it first in his chapter, and he says it again in Nassim's chapter. So he just, he has this kind of like resolute drive to never go back and be like that again. And I think... Right. He, like, is this a redemption arc? I don't know. But it's kind of shaping up to kind of act. It's at least giving redemption arc vibes. And we'll see what happens. But. He's certainly at this point a gray villain. Yes, he is complex. Yes. And I even... He's so fascinating. Like, I he's know. terrifying. He's so... It, like he's turning into one of those characters in like the I love to hate you category. Like I like, man, you're such an interesting character and you do some crazy stuff that I don't agree with and you're terrifying. But mm-hmm. man, you're so entertaining to read. Yeah. Like it's so engaging. Anyway. Yeah. I what were you going to say? No, it was it, very much the same of just. Okay. Um. Getting his perspective now that he's like had this amnesia, but it's coming back and he still feels very remorseful about what Mm -hmm. had happened in the past. It's like, um, it's like someone with addiction, right? Where it's Mm. when they're under the influence, they're a different person. Mm. And I feel like he was under the influence before. And he's not so mm-hmm. much now. So yeah, like what you were describing as being freer. Mm-hmm. Um, he is making more choices that are better. Um, and I do think he genuinely cares about... He certainly cares about um, Nason. And I think mm-hmm. he probably cares about the other kids too. Yeah. Maybe not to the same degree, but he definitely right. does all the guardian because he has the other two guardians are kind of the same as him. Right. Um, I feel like they're all in the same boat, but it was also really sad when I think this is jumping ahead to twelve. But when uh, Nasun is talking to Shafa, it is jumping ahead to twelve, um, and he's kind of telling her, he's kind of info dumping on her a little bit of like what the guardians would do, and how he would like take kids away manipulate them um shape them mold them into the origins that they that that fulcrum wanted them to be Mm -hmm. um and like hurting people like breaking hands and all this stuff and at some point it comes up where like he like he does what the voice wants him to do but not like the way they want him to do it like and because of that it's like inflicting pain on him Mm -hmm. like he like the voice wants him to be a lot more like rough and assertive with Nasun and he's not doing it. And she is like, but you're, but like the, the end uh, result is still the same. So why is it still hurting you? Uh, like she's, she's showing genuine, like caring for him. Mm-hmm. So it's both ways. They care for each other for right. sure. Right. And, it's such an interesting dynamic. It's just so bizarre. Yeah. Well, so jumping then, let's just jump into 12. Um, more Hoa at the top of the chapter. Um, talking to Na- talking to Essen about Nason. And he says, but you love her and that means that some part of me cannot help but do the same. In love, then we shall seek understanding. So... <laughs> I think Hoa is just as confused by this dynamic between <laughs> yeah. Shafa and Nason. Yeah. <laughs> and like Alabaster said in in the first chapter, like these stone eaters have been around for a really long time and they've kind of just forgotten how to be human mm-hmm. because they've existed for so long. Um, right. Which I think this is kind of like Hoa relearning mm-hmm. with the most bonkers examples you could give someone. <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, as far as, like, the human condition is concerned, I suppose this is an example of it, but it's, like, a very extreme and unhealthy version <laughs> yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah. He's seeing some of, like, the darker sides of, yeah. Yeah, for <laughs> of sure. human interaction, for sure. But, anyway. Um, so, Nason is, like, very good at listening. Mm-hmm. Which is fascinating because that was something that Nason, not Nason, something that Essen as Cyanite really struggled with. But um, Nason is like a pro at it. And it's something that Uche was supposed to be really good at too. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of curious. I'm curious to, I wonder like how good he could have been if he was even better than oh, Nason. Wild, right? But anyway, yeah, she's she's doing things that four ringers would struggle with and she's 10. Mm-hmm. Um, and her father continues to be a really negative impact mm-hmm. on her life. We learned, we learned that like the, the idea is that eventually they can learn how to cure themselves. If they kind of cultivate their powers enough, they can get to a point where they can learn how to like stop it. And that's why, like, that's kind of how they keep Jija uh, satisfied mm-hmm. in the short term. Um, like, yeah, she has to keep coming to training because she'll never learn how to cure herself if she doesn't like learn more, but he's starting to get impatient and he's getting like, he's getting tired of it. Yeah. And it's, and it, Nassim is starting to uh, lose the ability to manipulate him in this area. Right. Uh, Which this is how Shafa, I think this is where, Shafa started talking to her about how he also manipulated people, right? Because she's like, well, I could manipulate him. I've done it before. And Shafa's mm-hmm. like, oh. Yeah. Um, that, old, that old trick. Yeah. <laughs> been there, done that. Um, yeah. Because so, she's been living separate from everyone else mm-hmm. with her dad. When mm-hmm. all of the other origins have been living together... Uh, and Shafa wants her to live with everyone else, like all of the other origin kids. Which I do think is safer for her. Because I do not, Jija is not a safe person for her. Right. Um, it's just so, it's... Because of what happens at the end, I'm like, if only she had been at home when she had that nightmare and it was Jija that tried to wake her up instead of well, the, one her of her nice classmates. Friend. Yeah. That she really liked, yeah. Uh, yeah. There was also that moment of like G, like she's like talking to her classmates and she's talking to boys and Jija's like, I don't want you talking to him. Right. Unless it's for training. You're not going to talk to him. He's like 25. It's like, well, he's 18, but also like she's 10, so it's still not cool. But uh, but is she talking? I guess I didn't pick up on like the way she was talking to them as being. I don't think it's like if like flirting, I think like maybe she has like a little crush on him, but it's like, you know, a 10 year old having a crush that's, on an 18 year old. That's normal. It's a thing that happens, right? Yes. Um, I'm sure it's not reciprocated. <laughs> Also but sure it's not reciprocated. But still, Gigi's just like, no, don't talk to him. You you can't talk to them outside of outside of lessons. I don't want you interacting with them any more than you have to. Uh, gross. There was a moment where Nassan's like talking to Shafa, and she's like, I don't want you to kill him. <laughs> uh, he's what? my dad. Don't so, kill him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She even though he's awful. Yeah. He's my dad. And then Shafa's like, well, if he hurts you. I will kill him. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Again, with him being more of a father figure than her actual father. Right. Right. Um. So she decides she and Shafa decide she's gonna stay with the other mm-hmm. origin people, and he tells her that she just needs to rest, which. You know, would normally be great advice. Yeah. I want to know, because we don't really know why this happened to her right now. Right? Mm-hmm. 
No, she had a she had a nightmare and like in in the like in her sleep she manages to reach out to an obelisk basically. Mm-hmm. The, the sapphire, sapphire one. one. Mm-hmm. And when one of her friends tries to wake her up, uh she was super juiced from like connecting to the obelisk. Um, she turns him to stone, which is not something that we have ever seen someone do with that right. power. Well, I think um, it surprised everybody. Yes. I, and I it's, would guess that it surprised the Guardians, too. And the book said it's different from what's happening to Alabaster because that is like slower and mm-hmm. like it's, it's just different. This was like an instantaneous like he didn't even have time to feel fear. He was just like, boom, stone. Uh which freaked out all the other kids, which is fair. Yeah. But it's the really, it's, uh, it was Eats, right? The really nice coaster mm-hmm. boy. Mm-hmm. The one that uh, Shava had picked up mm-hmm. in his previous chapter. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a, while, all, while this is happening, we also have the encounter with Shava and Jija. Mm-hmm. Because Jija has realized that Nathan didn't come home. So he goes up to the the camp and is trying to find her. Mm-hmm. And has a confrontation with Shafa. And Shafa basically tells him to get lost. Or <laughs> he will make him lost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they come to an understanding. Yes. Uh, Jija is, has realized that uh, this man will kill him <laughs> if he stops. If he right. doesn't stop being such a pain which um i'm a little i mean the only reason that Jija wasn't already gotten rid of <laughs> has to have been because nason didn't want them to get rid of him and also because shafa is trying to be different than he used to be because if this had been if this had happened when he was still like under the influence, right? DJ would have yeah. been taken care of yeah. immediately. <laughs> yeah. Um, but. I love I love this quote from Shafa during this encounter. Mm-hmm. Um, he says, Nassan doesn't have a father. Shafa says softly, DJ will remember later that Shafa smiles the whole time that he says this. She needs no father, nor mother. She does not know this yet, though someday she will learn. Shall I teach her early how to do without you? And he positions two fingers just under Jija's jaw, pressing the tender skin there with enough force that Jija instantly understands his life depends on his answer. Mm -hmm. Just that moment of like, she doesn't need you. She doesn't like, she already doesn't have a father. Like mentally, she doesn't have any parents. Mm -hmm. Like every time she calls you daddy, it's just a manipulation. Mm -hmm. Um, It was man. So intense. Um, such a cool moment. But then we do learn when Shafa goes into uh, talk with Nassan, he kind of like shields her from the <laughs> stone body that she created. Um, right. Because she so didn't again, mean to do that. It was not intentional. Right. Um, so he's just, he's incredibly protective of her like emotions and her physical well being. Mm-hmm. But uh, then we learn that in her dream, she saw things like she sessed Whoa. things. The stuff in her dream made me have goosebumps. Yeah. Um, some of the node maintainers are still alive. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. And the way she described them as being like different from other origins, like smoother, less mm-hmm. unique, which like, of course, because they've been forced to be one thing. They're just a tool, you know, right. they've, Objectified in a way where they're they're just a a thing that you use, mm-hmm. um, which is sad. Mm-hmm. Um, she she also sesses out um, the Antarctic fulcrum, which, which apparently is still alive and well. Um, they did not realize, or at least Shafa did not realize that they were still around, and so. Now we're kind of gearing up. I feel like we're gearing up for some kind of confrontation between those two forces. And we've also got the confrontation in the Essen chapters of the, these other um, survivors with the 
origin com that she's in. So there's we're gearing up for like these two separate conflicts. I thought there was going to be a conflict between the two, but we're kind of getting this weird branch off thing happening, which is interesting. I mean, I think that will happen eventually. Eventually. I just don't know anymore if it's going to be in Not this book. Not as soon <laughs> as we thought, maybe. Yeah. Um. So Nassim can reach out to Obelisks now. And she can. She had that dream where she cessed for like um, miles. I don't know that she realizes that's what she's done. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I don't think she has. Um, it was in her sleep, but yeah. I, I mean, she described. I think. I think that Shafa knows what she's done. I was about to say the same thing. Yeah. But I, th- I think she was so like because the concept of falling up, um, mm-hmm. freaked her out. Mm-hmm. Like the feeling of that, which totally makes sense. Um, but I was like, oh, she's, she's going to an obelisk just like her mom. Yep. And she felt, she felt a being at the core. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. That was creepy. Yeah. Oh, that was creepy. So are, Um, so my question remains, are there stone eaters at the core of every obelisk? Potentially. Um, was it inside the obelisk or was it just a stone eater that was far away? Either way, um, a stone eater is because I'm wondering if it's, if she's going to have a stone eater, like buddy, the same way that Alabaster and Essen do. Right. Right. Uh, like a stone eater is going to show up in their found moon camp and just be like, Hey guys, I'm here to eat that kid when she turns into stone. Mm -hmm. Don't mind me. Mm -hmm. I'm a fly on the wall. So weird. (laughs) You know, um, did we get, did we get an explanation of why alabaster is turning into stone? We probably did, and I just haven't, and didn't stick. No, my my theory is that it's something to do with how much power he used to break the continent. Like right. there, I mean, Nassim reached out to an obelisk and turned someone else into stone. Right. I think that if you use an obelisk, there's like an inherent risk with like that much power. Yeah. Um, okay, that makes sense. Oh, we're seeing that Nason is far more powerful than she ought to be at 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, there was also this moment where uh, Shafa shows her the the statue she made. Mm-hmm. Um, she freaks out. She screams, of course. Um, and Shafa tells her, I need you to be calm. Mm-hmm. Um, she... She doesn't like say it. It was an inter- interesting writing because um, she doesn't like say it in quotes. But from the book, it says it's obviously uh, much heavier than Eights ever was. But Guardians are very strong. They carry him away. Nassim doesn't know where they take him. The beautiful seaborn boy with the sad smile and the kind eyes. And she never knows anything of his ultimate fate other than that she has killed him, which makes her a monster. Perhaps, Shafa tells her as she sobs these words. He holds her in his lap again, stroking her thick curls. But you are my monster. She is so low and horrified that this actually makes her feel better. That is so creepy. It is creepy, oh. but I think... Um... You're my monster. <sighs> I got chills when I heard that on the audiobook. Yeah. it's. I mean, it is disturbing. I'm trying to figure out how to articulate this. Um, I think there is something about Shafa not denying that what happened is horrifying. Right. He didn't, he didn't try to like make excuses for her. He wasn't like, right. oh, it's okay. It's not your fault. You were dreaming. You, it was an right. accident. Like he was like, he no, was this like... was bad. You're <laughs> right. This was bad, but I still love you. It's kind of, is how mm-hmm. I read that. And mm-hmm. I think that that would be comforting. Like, I think that that makes sense. Yeah. For her to be comforted by that and to not have the, like, denial of, no, 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 that wasn't, it wasn't bad. It's fine. Yeah. Um, I think that that, I think if he had done that, it would have made him a liar to her. Mm-hmm. And I think that that would have been um, something she held, held on to that, oh, he's a liar just like everyone else is. Yeah. So. Man. Yeah. Oof. Oof is right. 
So I think the next chapter is an Essen chapter. It is. Yep. You amid relics, which I'm passing mm. by. Yeah, we didn't have any Essen. Really. Well, we did actually know the first chapter, but we didn't get any. We just got the big lore dump pretty much. We didn't get any more progression with the like plot right. of Essen's stuff. So. Right. So for next week or next read along, you'll read um, chapter 13 and an interlude. So mm -hmm. just two. I'm also really excited. I'm Chapter really excited. Chapter 13 is really long, so. Oh, cool. Um, I'm excited to hear um, when Essen tells Tonky about all this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Tonky's gonna geek out. She's gonna lose her mind. <laughs> yeah. She's gonna lose her mind. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be great. Alrighty. Well, we have our reading assignment for next time. Yep. So I guess until next time, happy reading. And we'll talk to you next time. Later.